Hello folks, welcome to the UK Games Expo live stream. Thank you very much to Stuff by Bez for that wonderful raid while we were just, just chilling, setting up some tech there. Thank you for coming along. Um, I hear you were talking to uh, Andy Hopwood. Um, Kate and I had a chat with him a couple of weeks ago. Um, and, and the moral of that story is stay on target, Andy. Yes. Stay on target. Yes. However, having also chatted with Bez, I, I need to go back and watch the VOD because I think that will be the, the most delightfully chaotic of, of Twitch Conversations. dreams ever. Yes, very much yes. so. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Um, if this is your first time joining us, let me take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Millie, um, and up here above me, um, although in, yeah, yeah, uh, is Kate, UK Games Expo Marketing Manager. How are you, Kate? I'm good. I'm good. I'm finding it a little chilly, but I've found an expo coloured cardigan nice. uh, to be able to add to the, the uniform, which is good. So yes. not not yet on sale. Yeah, but, we were you know. saying with Ross last week that these shirts are designed for a good Summer. jog around the NEC, yes. not um, <laughs> December in various parts of the UK. Um, and while we mentioned various parts of the UK as if that was a scripted intro, it wasn't, folks. It wasn't. It's like we're getting better at this. It's like we're getting <laughs> practiced at this, doing this every week, isn't it? Um, sat over here is... Damon, how are you doing, my friend? Hi, I'm very well, thank you. Glad to hear you're good. Yeah. Um, so uh, each week we take a moment to chat with um, a friendly local gaming store around the UK. Um, and this one is is a little close to, to my home because I'm up here in the Northwest as well. Um, for the uninitiated, how do we say the name of your gaming store? Cone, a bit like ice cream. Yes, yes. Um, even though it's not spelt like that. Um, so yeah. Home okay. Gaming's corner. Yeah. Yes, you can't oh. see the corner behind me. It's okay. It's right. <laughs> Folks at home can see the, the wonderful logo. Um, and we'll get to the motto on the logo in a little bit, I think. But um, so uh, where are we? Where, where are you, Damon, right now? You mean the shop, not me personally, well, obviously. Yes, the royal we. The royal uh, yes. we. Um, we're in the middle of Combe, which is a town in Pendle in Lancashire, deep in tier three country. Mm -hmm. no. um, we're in a gorgeous little ar old arcade, just mm -hmm. opposite the Weatherspoons. So we're awfully handy and well worth visiting. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're That's into bosses, and if you're into bosses, we've got a small Burnley Cone and Nelson bus shrine next door to us. Oh, oh my right. goodness. <laughs> See, this, this is lovely because, um, I mean, people think about friendly local game shops and they're all over the place, but we, we have had a couple, and yours seems to be included in this, where they these really picturesque type um, villagey town kind of things, a little bit ye olde worldy, um, and it's wonderful to then, oh, and here's your local game shop along with that, you know. We're right next door to a tarot reader and across the across the corridor from a guitar tutor. Wow, <laughs> eclectic. And a, hairdresser's, and a hairdresser's at the entrance, so <laughs> you can almost live your life here. Oh, that sounds delightful. That's splendid, or at least get advice on it in mm. random ways. How long has um, uh, Gaming Corner been there then? How long have you had this wonderful, wonderful location? Right. Jason and I have been at Come Gaming Corner for just over a year. But mm -hmm. it was um, owned by somebody else before we took it over. And that's had quite a long presence for oof, being, being in that little position for what, seven or eight years. Wow, that's amazing. But for us, it's a new venture. Yeah. So it's about a year on. So have you always been like interested in board games and card games and things? Or, or is this a, an exciting new world that you're, you're getting into? Me, I have been into board games since I was about five. Wow. Um, developed, developed my own little war games when I was in my teens. And mm -hmm. when I eventually discovered D&D &D and originally taught some trolls when I was yep. early 20s, um, I got my whole world changed. Wow. Because I was a mainly a war gamer until he invented D&D. That's tremendous. That's so, very, very cool. When you say say like war gaming, do you mean like um, the battle recreations, like traditional with like the nice hills and the wonderful little trees and stuff? Originally, that's all we had. I did Napoleonic war games and yeah. ancient war games, and then eventually I did real war games as a member of the Sealed Knot. <laughs> ah, and battered people with sticks. Oh, yes. 
running around the countryside. Yes, <laughs> it's, yes. It's tremendous. Sleeping under cannons in Scotland. <laughs> it was grand fun. <laughs> That's wonderful. That See, a... I like things like that because anyone who has done reenactment or even live role playing and then they're trying to take their armor off or put their armor on whilst, you know, suddenly running into a combat, nobody argues that it takes you, you know, six to ten rounds because they've tried it in like being halfway in a suit of chain mail or halfway with your halberd trying to do this around your jerkin. It's like, yeah, try it for real, people. You, you and you know. can't really fight 25 orcs with one man in a sword. <laughs> no. <laughs> Unless you've got magic, which, you know, <clears throat> clearly we seem to have run out of in this universe. But, you know, have it in different ways. Magic. Oh. <laughs> so so from there, you got into to Dungeons and Dragons. Um, mm -hmm. Not to start a, an edition war, because clearly I've got opinions. Um <laughs> I think I'm of the same opinion. Yeah, we we. So was this the the first oh. like um ed edition you kind of got into the 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 AD No, I got into, got into tunnels and trolls first. Tunnels mm. and trolls. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then into basic D and D. Bear in mind, I'm very very old. I'm a, Nonsense. I'm a Nonsense. Six hundred odd year old elf. <laughs> um, <laughs> So but, was that um, like was that with with family or was it with a bunch of friends? Like um, I I started playing Dungeons and Dragons and, and RPGs actually in school, and it was my design teacher who gave up um, a room we could go and play in, so long as he was also allowed to play in the campaign. That was my introduction. What, where was yours? Well, I came through the War Game Society in Blackburn, which I was part of, and we started thinking it's all very well doing Napoleonics and agents, but let's put magic and Lord of the Rings in it. <laughs> started making our own bits of rules for it, yeah. and oh. then we found fantasy war games, and then we found chainmail because chainmail took us into Dungeons and Dragons. So that's very cool. So you did, you started to homebrew like your own kind yeah. of rules for putting monsters into yeah. your your miniature war game. Wow. Yeah. So it's all very simple. We didn't do a lot of magic and use things like fireballs or cuttable rules, but it, it worked. It worked, yeah. Yeah, yeah very much so. Um, See, I, I like this because um, people sometimes look at the historical gaming and say, oh, no, it's all old hat and things. It's like, well, no, because this is where Dungeons and Dragons came from. This is where Tunnels and Trolls came from. This is where people were messing around with this before, you know, um, everyone put it, into an actual gaming thing so it's massively important to the gaming industry in that here's your tactics here's your things which now are leaching over into more tactical um board games and more strategic board games as well as you know general role playing so i think that's i think that's tremendous we should we should do an article on this mills yeah yes. Remind me. yeah <laughs> His, the history of yeah, yeah. the history uh, speaking of articles um i i think this is a great thing to put in a program and later on, me and you will have a, a quick chat about 2021. Um, yes. Spoilers. But yeah, put, yes. put a pin in that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so from there, with with adding it into you and then you got into Tunnels and Trolls, was that like just just because sometimes it's too cold to go out and reenact, so let's play some Tunnels and Trolls? Or did it turn oh, into like all of your week was encompassed with some form of gaming? Well, it got complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it always um, does. I started off just playing Tunnels and Trolls about 50 miles away in Blackburn because that's where mm. the war games were. Mm -hmm. I then found a young lady in Manchester who went playing with the Manchester Dungeon Society, Manchester University. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Which then took me across to Liverpool. And a weekend or a week would be Blackburn on Thursday, Manchester Friday, Liverpool Saturday and Sunday and then we brought it to Cone at one point <laughs> and then back in well, five or six days a week was played some variation yeah. of it awesome uh, and, and I had a job as well at that point yeah <laughs> I mean I um I, speaking as a northerner um not so far from yourself I know like this sort of like hopping between towns and stuff is is not necessarily unusual for for ourselves up this way um because mm. we are we are spread out we do have some lovely countryside around here which also ne necessitates like i i jolly off to manchester sometimes to play um dungeons and dragons and things there and i've been over to liverpool for for some some games and things and and dropping around so this is this is not necessarily unusual but it does it does give you like a a wonderful 
like extended family, doesn't it? Really. It also gave us a wonderful selection of places to go because we use, all use the same rules based on the same campaign. And mm. something like a thirty or forty mile radius, you could go anywhere with a character and play. Oh wow, well. that's that very was really cool. quite good fun. That's epic, and that's tremendous because that's I've that's lost... the leading. Sorry, go on. I was going to say I've lost sound on somebody, but I don't know oh. if that's. Oh. oh. Oh, no. Sorry. That's it. You're back. Oh, there okay. we go. Phew. Phew. <laughs> so um, that's interesting because that's very much the, the living versions of games that they do now, mm. whether it's um, uh, like the, the Pathfinder and um, even the, the L5R kind of Legend of the Five Rings mm -hmm. and things. They're all these live living games where players move around. You play with the same character or same set of stuff and it influences the game. And, uh, and that's tremendous. But all these kind of things were happening way before oh. this formalization again indeed and, and as university students are they were keen on clever things so you had the dungeon masters guild and you were accredited dungeon masters and would sign off people's sheets to say that's all right oh wow and it, that's amazing and it really cut down on people having thirty thousand artifacts in the back pocket <laughs> <laughs> in one hand and then with the other yeah. hand it's yes. like come on guys <laughs> yeah so it's a little like I mean, I mean it's a really interesting thing it's a little bit like um adventure league now and um uh, which is the organized play for for Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder Society? They have log sheets where where they've literally formalized what what folks in in the gaming community are doing themselves. That you know, no, I've yeah. definitely said they can have this plus three Vorpal sword. That's all good, it's all fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they legitimately had to die twice to get this and that kind of stuff, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Oh, Sorry. No, go for it, David. We, we, we then linked in something called Stabcon, which you've probably heard of if you're in the yes. north. Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. Yes, definitely. I yeah. have frequently uh, suggested they change their name because it sounds <laughs> sounds a little murdery. <laughs> no, it's because originally it was a diplomacy convention. Mm -hmm. All that yes. stuff. <laughs> so Monday night, I still play with online with the guy who created Stabcon, Dave Waring. Yeah, um, yeah. All my little staff con trumps, and so the northwest and the south joined together at staff con, and yeah. we all shared a big role, set of rules. Yeah. Was, so, so for folks who haven't heard about staff con, obviously I have, and Kate has as well. Just tell us a little bit about what you got involved with there. Oh, way, way back, um, <laughs> I went to the earliest staff cons in the Manchester halls of residence, mm -hmm. and that was just a gaming convention where they originally were a diplomacy convention yeah which slowly became a board games convention which then became a board games and role play convention uh several years on the originator stopped being able to do it for various reasons mm -hmm. and a lovely couple who were chums of mine from liverpool called harry and michelle took over who again you've probably come across mm -hmm. They were around, started running it twice a year in summer and winter. Yeah. And we're on virtual stat comes this year. Yes, this year. All yeah. off this school. Yes. And I, that's another thing I, I think is beautiful about the, the UK gaming kind of. We have all these other other local versions. I think, what, what else was there there recently? There was a grog meet, um, uh -huh. was, was another little one. Um, I only know the northern ones because they're all the ones that I can get to. But, you know, there are these in your local gaming area. You hear of these mm. wonderful little meetups all, all to keep the kind of um, the vibe going, keep your, your, your contact with everybody. Um, and it's really cool. Um, yeah, Sandra, yes. Um, uh, so um, from there, um, lots of gaming and um, traveling around. And then we, we get up to about a year ago where you took over um, Gaming Corner. Uh, yeah. what's, it, what's it been like um, diving into this whole world of, of um, game stores? Because it's a little bit different than, than going around and um, playing games. There's a little bit more kind of to a game shop than that. It was a whole new world from being a social worker out of hours as well. Wow. Oh my um, goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and actually, 40 that's, years of that. <laughs> that. That's actually a really good... So having that level of emotional intelligence with people, I think that's a massive bonus for um, for anyone interacting with, with people, in, especially in a retail environment, but with a, a gaming shop, I think that's a, that's a tremendous background, you know, because um, one of the things that's 
that games unite gamers is that there's often people who aren't necessarily that great at talking to other people or, or being out of doors for any length of time or being with lots of people for a length of time. Um, but actually gaming seems to take that and say, hey, here's a framework in which we can do all of these things and interact with with everybody who says that going outside is normal and, and it normalizes the whole thing. So as a social worker, that's that's got to have been a great help with um, with that whole invitational thing for people. And it was indeed, uh, but I say I'm I'm the backing. Jason's Jason's the arms, legs, and face. I'm more right. the backing of the company. <laughs> I retired. I had a retirement fund. Jason needed to take the shop somewhere else, as it was instead of close it down. So I'm, mm. I backed it. Oh. He knows more about shops and stock and things like that than I ever will. Yeah. And he's a very keen gamer himself been around and came to it from computers I think. I mean that that's great in itself I mean I've heard um, UK Games Expo directors Richard and Tony talking about how you need two sides with your with any kind of partnership because there are things that that Richard will do and will do amazingly and then there are things that a Tony will do and will do amazingly um, and and if they were both exactly the same and, and uh, operating in the same way a lot of things just wouldn't be as as well considered as as they are so it's great mm. to hear that you and jason um who unfortunately can't make it today uh, mm. possibly because he's ready to to get back into the shop yeah he's being very busy at the moment he has a lot happening today delivery day first day oh. back after a month of lockdown awesome that's awesome so i've left him being busy and i'm just being the the, the front you piece. be our media darling i love it <laughs> yes. um, we have um and we'll show the folks at home um there's a, a lovely photo here of um group of folks sat around a table it looks like they're playing um maybe magic the gathering or perhaps um oh, it, I maybe it's dungeons is... i think it's dungeons and dragons actually it looks like there's mm. there's um one two three four five there's like six folks around the table and you can see the what is it the kaladesh little airship yes. that from the magic yeah. of gathering yeah yes. um, so uh, in an in a normal time uh, in a normal yeah. situation it, do you do you have lots of events in in at the gaming corner we do we've we're quite lucky the way we're set up we've got one room which is if you like where the counter and all the goods are mm -hmm. with the demo table so we can teach you how to play in there they have like a side room which will take up to 20 odd people in non covid times so we can run little magic convent competitions, enough space for two or three Warhammer matches, which whatever you happen to want. At the moment, it's a bit different because we can't have people in the back room at all. Yeah, we have to spread <laughs> yeah. out and, and keep our keep ourselves safe. Um, but you you mentioned there a, a couple of different things. So you have um, magic and and Warhammer and, um, and Vanguard, Vanguard as well. Excellent, Ooh. all these different things. Um, do you have like regular events for these? Is it like um, some places have like Tuesday night is Vanguard night and obviously there's the massive Friday night magic and Adventure yeah. League on and, and that kind of stuff or is it, you tell me. Right, we have, again this is in the no, in non-Covid times, yeah. mm. we ran quite nicely, we had Wednesdays were sort of role playing night. Mm -hmm. They have a Saturday afternoon was a juniors role playing night, so the under 16s will come and not mix with the old people because <laughs> they have a different way of playing anyway. Definitely, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thursdays we have a painting and hobby night, so rather than doing anything, come and make your models. The people who are a bit more into it, show you how to make them, get a bit of painting help, that sort of thing. Friday, obviously, is D&D, &D, Friday Night Magic, what you want. Mm -hmm. Sundays tends to be Vanguard Sunday. Nice. And Monday night is a, a spare role-play night, which we awesome. run. <laughs> a spare role-play night? So, to myself. so is, is, when you say spare one there, is it, is it um, really popular? Like, you got overspill and, and people oh, who need space? We have. We have two or three Wednesday games. 
Mm-hmm. We have, I used to run a Thursday night game of classic dungeon crawl <laughs> and somebody else ran D&D on, on the side and the yeah. painters painted around us. <laughs> nice. um, <laughs> Saturday, we had juniors and a senior game going on, plus people playing Warhammer. We could split the tables up and have half and half. Yeah. And then now and again, we ran the Path to Glory for Sigma and ah. the, um, oh golly, what did they call it? The 40k encounter things where they, yeah, yeah, the kill team, what kill team, yes, that's kill it, team. yeah, yeah. Wow, when you um, so you mentioned that there was um, I think it's on it was on a Thursday. You had the the hobby, the miniatures kind of stuff. Do you yeah. are you still tempted to get stuck in with that? Like, oh, so, well, certainly we do. We still have our own armies. We've got to build and paint. <laughs> <laughs> never ending never ending Jason and I will play games as well it's not just a matter of oh there we are have a box go and do it we play with you we'll teach you we oh, provide opponents that's awesome that's awesome and we also provide food coffee and you know, oh. biscuits chocolates we don't quite oh, go for sandwiches but pot noodles and coffee nice <laughs> so so good snack there just in case you because sometimes mm-hmm. sometimes your D sessions or your 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 army your your skirmish can can go on a little longer than expected can't it oh some we have people will sit there for six seven hours if we, if we let them that's, that's awesome tremendous. <laughs> it's that's tremendous. great to hear it's a community. I love that. Yes, very much so. And to stop people getting hangry as well. That's uh, yeah. that's very important. I mean, nerd rage is one thing, but being hangry is, is just, yeah. That's good, though. It does sound like a really, um, it sounds like it was a really cozy community and the whole um, cone gaming corner thing as well. It's, it's eliciting this image of everyone, like you're saying, these guys are playing, these guys are fitting around it. It's, that's just tremendous, you know. I feel and like we're so. really missing it with with COVID. We really are. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's not so good. Although, really good news uh, this morning with the mm. vaccines and things. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Maybe yes. Everyone in the universe has. You know, we've got the first lot. They're starting, you know, tiers of people going down the, the list of, right, let's get these guys in and done and then move down. So they think, you know, a, I stole a phrase from uh, a very lovely German chat from Haber, who I was talking to earlier in the week. So thank you for that, Adrian. Is is carefully optimistic. Yeah. So yes, carefully optimistic. Hopeful for spring at the moment. Spring. Yes. 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 Yes, indeed. And given that UK Games Expo is fourth to the sixth of June, and therefore technically summer, (laughs) we should be. We should be. You'll have to invite me and my motorbike down to come and visit. Oh, Oh, absolutely, yes. (laughs) Yes. Tremendous. Beautiful weather normally for for motorbikes and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. So, so when um, when Jason has finished taking deliveries and things um, today, what are the what are the plans for for tier three? What what's our run up to Christmas looking like? Well, we'll be open. <laughs> Great. <Good>. We will... <laughs> the thing I want, yeah. We're, we're open, we're, buying, we're getting some stock in, but because of the way the world works, mm-hmm. it's, if you want things, we will order them. Yes. Wonderful. Because awesome. rather than having lots of stuff on the shelf, right at the beginning in March, we got caught. We mm-hmm. went for a large pre-release of Magic. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then the day after it arrived, it went into lockdown and we were stuck for a month with nothing. We just couldn't set do anything with it because it was short. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So until we know where we are, we'll keep basics in. We'll have all the stuff you'd probably expect, you know, mm-hmm. base, base start sets. And yep. we'll always carry boosters. But mm-hmm. we'll then, anything more exciting, we'll pre-order for you. We'll get them out in click and collect. I'll deliver them if I have to. Oh, that's good. So you are doing like click and collect and, and folks can um, either drop you a call or on the Facebook page or something and say, I really need um, Rekash yes. th- Flesh and also <laughs> yeah. um, a, a new highlighting brush and you'll you'll get it ready for them. If we've got them in stock, we'll get it out to them on the day. If we haven't, wow. we'll, we'll say, OK, we've got to order it, delivery, order day's Monday, whatever day it is. Uh-huh and we'll get it for you for next week oh, either drop awesome. in for it or we'll get the delivery out for oh, free 
for free. Yes. Unless, yes. unless you happen to live 30 or 40 miles away, in which case... Yeah, that's, that's fair enough. Local delivery is OK. Yes, yes. <laughs> understandable, really, there. Um, and so, so in terms of, like... Um, Oh, you're getting ready to do your your Christmas shop. Um, I'm also going to go and get my food. And on the way past, I can then pick up something from from yourselves because you've got it. Indomitus. Re- yeah, pick up Indomitus definitely. Nice. Yes. Um, yeah. When are you are you in the shop from like um, twelve till three? What are your what are your times at the minute? Uh, during lock during tier three, we're open from about four till six, four till seven. Oh, cool. Because it people are coming home more by that time or it covers the various shifts the early shifts are finishing the late shifts are about to go in mm-hmm. That's nice. um the fact we can't have people in playing there's not a lot of point really open two till ten like we normally are mm-hmm. yeah no that makes sense once you're once you're doing your evening through because a lot of places are doing the same they're being open later mm. so folks can can make sure they've got time to to do it rather than rush around so we can call down we can pick up our bits and pieces and um say hi in a socially distanced manner and still get our Christmas goodies in time. You certainly can. Excellent. Um, we can order them. We even have our own little dice bags with that picture on. Oh, <laughs> that's so, awesome. So that's that's a good thing. So uh, on the on the because we it's it's a little bit small here on um, on the overlay on the Twitch stream. Just tell us what your um, the 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 motto is on your uh, your shield. Oh yes, in dice we trust. <laughs> I, I love it. Because we're gamers, and what else <laughs> makes our world work? Yeah, uh-huh. I love it. The drama with the dice. Um, yes. And so you, you've got your own dice bags with them on? We have, yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Found, again, the StopCon thing, where I found somebody who made them. So uh-huh. made a little order look, so handmade, and we get them done when they're needed. Oh, that's that so cute. Cool. And you, that yeah, cool. look, they fit a good number of D6s in, right? Oh, they are probably get boxes of all sizing nice you, mean, nice you need 30 sided dice for when i don't cross it under and crawl indeed yes yes ah, all I the weird so dice for that one i was talking <laughs> that, with that's someone, an ace game someone <laughs> about a d26 the other day that was a, an mm. odd one d- definitely mm. weird things um, i've got a d13 <laughs> but yeah yeah i've heard of them <laughs> all the odd stuff um do you have any um in the run up to Christmas, do you have anything that you're you're sort of excited to share with folks? Like um, you mentioned in Dominus, um, did I get that right? In Indomitus. Indomitus, yeah. 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 So I'm thinking of Jurassic Park in the back of my yeah. head there, clearly. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that with which is from um, the Games Workshop um, thingy, the new the mm-hmm. new big exciting stuff. Do you have any any others any other hot recommendations for for what people can call down for? Yeah, we're going into some of the more different war game types mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like Malifaux, like yep. the way western cowboy war games those sorts Ooh. of things and they're becoming interesting we're looking at conquest as well because we're trying to diversify from just warhammer because mm-hmm. there's so many more interesting things you can do again old-fashioned style war games um the world war ii ones it's just a bit different. Mm. Takes everybody's in, in ideas going. Yeah, it's That's one of these cool. things where let's not just be fantasy, let's have a bit of history there. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you're in a perfect position to recommend having I mean, your, your gaming history. It must be great mm. when you, you introduce people. Like I do it myself with, with RPGs. Like we start with Dungeons & Dragons because it's, it's big, it's great, it's fun. And then we mm. try yeah. something. Uh, one page RPGs. Um, we were talking to the game shop older shop with all their esoteric weird things a while <laughs> yeah. ago, and it, it's just great when you get to introduce something that you at heart love. Um, so you're you're trying to um, recommend some of the the weird and wonderful world of of extra miniature war. Oh, games. Malifaux particularly. If you've never seen Malifaux played, it's a wonderful game. It's yeah. tremendous, and the the models are quite extraordinary. Actually, yeah. that's slightly larger than usual as well. Makes oh, them right. very interesting. And the the mechanics of having your own hand of cards to change a, a dice roll for a card ball. Yes. So there's oh. a, almost a tactic to it. Yeah. So you have you have the randomness, which means ah, it didn't quite go though I wanted, and then you think, well, do I want this? So I play the card to make it better, or should I say no? I'm going to suck it up for that. But the next one. You know, this is this is going on there. And the role playing game that goes with it's very very similar in style, and that is a tremendous game. You can almost get wonderful. away with it. It's almost like a Jonah Hex sort of cowboy game. 
awesome very very cool see i i haven't seen the role-playing game for that i'm quite excited to have a look at it but um oh it's good yeah. we had one of our lads run it and it was very yeah. interesting um, steampunk going through into a different world almost it is, it's, it's weird awesome. wow. that sort of weird west kind of yeah. vibe and stuff but the war game when you've got people attacking with their flock of pigs against <laughs> canteen yeah. girls in yeah, can can outfits. It's quite yeah, fun. exactly. <laughs> People are like, is, is she good? No, no, she's got guns. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. Oh, dear. oh gosh, I mean, it's wonderful to to kind of consider because um, when you have such varied backgrounds and obviously with traveling around the northwest when you were you were learning all the different games, it's wonderful to kind of bring that to your community. So we always get kind of stuck in the. No, what is it? The the cult of the new and the hype of, of of the next new thing, and it's nice to be able to kind of slow down and go. Actually, come and have a look. Come and have yeah. a look. Yeah, yeah. But if, if if we've got it, we'll play it. You can have a go at it. Yeah. Awesome. If, again, we've got a huge shelf full of games, which people can come and play from the games library option. Oh wow! So you have like a a, a nice sized games library. People can can just. Mm drop in and and have a go and we're considering making it during these tier three in covid times like the old-fashioned video store come and <sighs> borrow it for three days and we'll make it clean again and let you come somebody else borrow it for three days that's great that's very cool take it home that's great i love the idea of that remember then when mm. you used to go down and look at all the all the cases <laughs> you take it and you had to had to rewind it the, the i think the board game re equivalent is you have to put them all in the right bags Yes. yes. Put everything back Indeed. properly. Yeah. Nice. Don't be a monster. Make sure it's all nice and neat. <laughs> you know? right. Anything from little cheap, little games all the way to these huge games you'd never normally buy. Some of the big Warhammer board games and the Alien mm. games. Yeah. I mean, they 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 are nice big box games. So it it is good to kind of have the opportunity to to have a go before you mm. you take that plunge and yeah. and go for it. Um, I, I imagine in those boxes there's much more than you can ever get through in three days. But it gives you a feel of the game, though, a lot of the yes. time, which yeah. is the idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. Sort of, that's a great idea. So it's about five pounds for three days if you're interested. Nice, Ooh, nice, yeah. That's so very this, cool. It's a good plan. I think that's that's very. Um, I'm liking it. So. Um, where can we find you let's remind folks and then also um let's share where they can find you online so they can get make sure they get the the click and collect and the the, the drop in we're, we're on facebook as cone gaming corner mm -hmm. we've got a website which is conegamingcorner.co.uk and we are in the arcade opposite weatherspoons going up the hill in cone um if you're driving there Bravo, Bravo, nine, zero, Lima, Golf. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's practiced um, that, that re repetition there, wasn't it? Well, so many people ought to know where it is. Um, we've got parking for half an hour outside, or you can park around the back of Weatherspoons all day. Oh, great. That's good. That's good. Um, and right now, you obviously, we're, we're in tier three over this way, so we can't do organized play and events but you do have them um in ordinary times so so come the early spring we'll be getting back into things like regular dungeons and dragons and rpg nights oh, oh yes and um, card night in fact if you're a family bubble that wants a day out we can have a family bubble playing oh nice that's, oh, that's that's really good, yeah. yeah oh that's been yeah that's Great. amazing it's very Especially it's very cool to see this sorry go on Especially since lots of them games are generally at home on their own, so they might have two of them who can be a bubble and come and play each other in the shop rather than in the flat or wherever. Uh -huh. If yeah, you're yeah, if you're a proper so. bubble, we will support you. That's great. Excellent. That's great. Um, Pat, UKG Pat has just pointed out I've got the wrong postcode on screen. Um, oh. Thanks, Pat. Thanks for thanks for reminding me. Um, but we will we will make sure when um, when we put out the posts and uh, in post production we will correct that for you. Make sure everybody sees when we we upload this to, to Facebook and YouTube, um, and when Kate posts and shares um, yeah. about the shop on the UK Games Expo website, we'll we'll make sure that's correct. Um, if you're not signed up to the Expo uh, newsletters and stuff, now would be a great time because you'll be able to find out lots of details and also learn about 
Colin Gaming Corner and Damon and um, send our best wishes to Jason. He well, well. rolled his sleeves up and got stuck in with um, uh, ordering and, and sorting all the wonderful games for the, for the December Christmas season. Um, uh, yeah. Um, He's the engine. It's the engine. <laughs> oh, that's it. Good work. Good lad. Um, uh, if you aren't following, um, if you go, if you aren't um, on Facebook, go over and say hi to the, to the Colin Gaming Corner. Um, mm. Show him some love. Uh, and it, it, it's been great chatting with you, Damon. It's lovely to hear. It. It's lovely to chat about the North. <laughs> I know yes, that's isn't it? It's lovely to find somebody who goes, oh, I've been there, I've done that. Yeah, it's really great mm. to hear that. And it's, uh, I love the, the community we've got up this way. Um, and as spread out as we are. Uh, we, um, we're going to take a short break now um, to change over. Um, and then me and Kate will be back to have a little bit of a chat about some of the social media posts we made recently. Because um, yes. it's the start of December and that's normally when things happen at, at Expo HQ. Um, so we'll be back in a, in a moment or two to chat about that. Uh, it's been great chatting with you, Damon. Uh, thanks very much, folks. Don't go away. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Do you want me to leave? Do I just leave? Are we off? Oh, oh no. why is it not? Right. No, it's all right.
Hey folks, welcome to the UK Games Expo live stream. Uh, it's me and it's it's Kate, UK yes. Games Expo marketing <laughs> manager. We've moved around, it's confusing. We have. <laughs> so I want to take a minute now to, to talk about um, some of the things that we posted. Well, I say the royal we, it's Kate and the frog in her pocket. Um, mm -hmm. And that posted on um, the Facebook and the Instagram and the Twitters and, and the website and in the email, all the places where you can normally Discord, find, LinkedIn, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, because it was talking about um, 2021. Um, mm -hmm. Normally, uh, we're on the 2nd of December, normally round about now, Tony is frantically coding things, checking things are right, also trying to prep for Dragon Meat um, yeah. and w whatever game he's running and or playing there that weekend. Um, and switching on um, application forms and ticketing and all this kind of stuff. Uh, yes. But it, it, it's a bit of a quiet December. What's going on? So um, because of the lockdown, because of the tears, because of the virus in general, I see the virus has taken on a, a capital letters sense in the last year or so, um, we are not sure what we are going to be allowed to do. Now, as of this morning, there's been really good news to say that uh, we've got some vaccines ready, not we, but the country has mm -hmm. vaccines uh, coming to them. And hopefully we can start the process of getting everyone um, beginning to be getting our build up on immunity to stuff, which means that people can be out and about because they can be out and about. We are carefully optimistic about attempting to run a physical show for 2021. So the dates of the 2021 UK Games Expo are Friday the 4th to Sunday the 6th of June. And as far as possible, we are going to do everything to run a, a safe and um, as good as possible 2021 show. Now, whether that's gonna be a, yeah, actually everyone's good and this will be a normal show as usual with absolutely everything in it, um, that would be amazing. We'd, we'd really like to do that. Yes, please. Um, or whether it needs to be a, actually we need a bit of social distance and therefore the aisles are going to be bigger. There's more distance between people. Um, maybe we can't sell quite as many tickets. We don't know. What we're aiming to do is the best possible physical show with which is safe, which is fun for everybody, which um, is all past the guidelines that we have at the time. Because again, those are likely to change in the next couple of months. So it's pretty much a watch this space. We would very much like to run a physical show. That is our aim. We are planning for two shows at the moment, one which is mostly normal and one which will be at a distance. And, um, and it's a case of keep informed, keep in touch with us on social media, make sure you sign up for the newsletter, um, see what's happening. Because as soon as we know and we have a plan for things, we are letting everybody else know. Okay, so it's not oh, like yes. it's not like we've forgotten to do it. Oh, no, no, <laughs> we've forgotten to we've forgotten to put tickets on because we're we're having fun eating mince pies. It, yeah, it, it's, it's good. We're, we're just playing all those board games that you guys send us each year. That, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and it it's not that it's not going to happen. We are we are planning for this. It's all in hand, but it's just that that taking a, a time to get it yes. the way it should be. Yes, to get it right, to get it safe, to make sure that um, everything is assessed of how do we get this to work? How do we play this thing safely? How can we make sure that people are confident and mindful of each other? How do we make sure that all of the staff and attendees and exhibitors and everyone is there, how do we make sure everyone's safe? And we do this every time anyway, we have a, a big safety thing to say, here, how you do it? And here's our volunteer training to make sure we do that, which we as staff also have to do. But this year it's kind of like, right, well, we've got this as well. So what can we add in? How do we make sure that this is the best possible UK Games Expo in the safest possible way? Okay, that's awesome to hear. I'm, I'm relieved now. I was panicking. Yes. Um, best ways to, to find out are to sign up to the newsletter. Yes, um, which you can do from our website. You can also um, have a look at us on Facebook. Uh -huh. We've got quite a big following. Yeah, and then also We're Twitter on. and Instagram. Um, yes. If the We're on LinkedIn, for LinkedIn. anyone who wants to go through the grown-up version. Nice, <laughs> that's exciting. Um, yeah. If folks have got um, questions or or they just want some clarifications, uh, what is the best place? Is is there an FAQ coming? Um, are there, there's, 
so so we so we normally try and put all the FAQs on our website because we can't um so la last year last year 2019 mm -hmm. we ran a show with 25,704 unique visitors that's quite a lot of people to get through answering questions even if only you know a third of them want to know stuff so we normally have FAQs on our website we are updating those at the moment but again until we know more we're not sure what's happening so okay. keep in touch on the news page have a look um if you have burning questions try and answer them through the form in the website that's okay. probably the best way to get us so the so i through the website where all the up-to-date yes. information is and when we have new yes. information on the website we'll we'll mention it on we the will. socials yes. excellent and tickets currently look like they're going to be released at easter easter okay easter. cool that's the plan excellent it may change but that's the plan that's the plan <laughs> Right. Thank you for that. I'm relieved now. Hope everybody else is relieved. And if they, they've still got questions now, we know where to go and find them. Um, we're going to take a moment to add in some folks from, mm -hmm. from backstage. We'll be back in a minute or two, uh, a few minutes with um, Cubicle 7 and talking about some exciting things. Um, so don't go away. We will be right back again again.
Hello, folks. We're back. It's the UK Games Expo live stream. I'm still Millie. Up here is still Kate, UK Games Expo marketing manager. But over here, there we go. That was seamless. Um, we've got <laughs> we've got two new guests. Um, we've not spoken with Cubicle Seven since since August uh, before virtually expo um so it'd be nice to get a catch up and we have here with us emmett and podrick how are you doing folks yeah really good really good great yeah thanks for having us you're welcome. slightly intimidated by the giant heads on the stream but i'm trying not to look at <laughs> no everybody needs to see see who's here yeah don't don't watch the twitch channel just watch the zoom call yeah yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Slowly. Like, the map. I don't the look map. like that. I don't look... Yeah, yeah, your map is beautiful. Yeah. We were admiring everyone's backdrops uh, before uh, before we went live, and it's that whole. Oh, that's that's really cool, and this is really good. So... Yeah, 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 yeah. Um... You can't see off here is just all boxes of empty Christmas decorations. <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely getting too much of an insight into my. Oh, gosh, that's <laughs> yeah, we've got we've got the is that the special edition Reich. WFRP yeah, up the on the shelf? Collector's edition of Enemy in Shadows um, there. Mm -hmm. And I think I've got the standard edition of Enemy in Shadows. Yeah. Nice. And the Ubershack Adventures 1 collection as well. Nice. Uh, and some other bits and bobs. So we, we'll get so I don't to. Know where it cuts off. Yeah, it, mm. we just got the special edition and then it just chops off there and then we can see the map over your other shoulder. Um, I think we'll I think we've got some pictures to look at those um, a little bit later. But let's take um let's take a moment to we last spoke to you in August. We finally made it to December. Um, We're almost there. Almost there. <laughs> Stay on target. So close, folks. <laughs> uh, what's been what's been happening at Cubicle Seven um, in the past? How how's life been over that way? good good i mean it's good as it can be Easy. you know it's um we're we're, uh, we're we're muddling through uh as everyone is this year but uh but yeah just uh i just congratulations to everyone over there for the running virtual expo it was uh really excellent really really great con and great way to actually be able to interact with people um you know personally i've been really looking forward to doing the the circuit circuit this year of all the various cons so mm -hmm. to be able to have yeah. that was was really really great awesome um, thank you but no, we're we're doing well. You know, we've we've a lot of lot of stuff uh, happening that we'll we'll chat about soon. But um, yeah, in, in Ireland, we went back into lockdown there a few weeks ago. We've just come out there two days ago, kind of in the build up to Christmas. So I think yeah, people people are very much looking forward to holidays and and, and meeting up with everyone. But uh, but no, we're we're still. I think pretty much everyone is working from home uh, mm -hmm. in the company, bar our customer service um, and at the. Uh, packing uh, everyone doing the packing and picking of the, of the books and shipping them out and uh, of course you have to implement various different um measures for for making sure everything's you know packed clean and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um yeah so we we have t a very large office there with one person upstairs in a huge open plan office <laughs> and one person downstairs in the warehouse packing up the books so the space this is yeah. all mine now like um, like the cat from Red Dwarf. That's mine. Yeah. That's yeah. mine. <laughs> All around everything. Um, it's really cool to hear that everybody is is taking uh, the chance to stay safe. Take you know taking measures to keep everything healthy. And um, everybody is of course looking forward to to Christmas and stuff. Um, I wonder how much of um how much of uh, lockdown and having to be socially distanced and far apart was into what. You're you're about to launch or have launched virtual tabletops? Yeah, so we um, we launched the Foundry um, VTT and a lot of fantastic work done by Mooman uh, Russell, and we launched on Roll Twenty as well. Wow. Uh, Park, you might might chat about that. You've obviously been a bit more involved than than myself. Yeah, sure. So I mean, th there was great. We're f yeah, so the lockdown did affect um, everybody's priorities this year, and obviously we wanted people to be able to play our games. Uh, in as many formats as possible. This wasn't the year to be, uh, you know, restricting everyone to enclosed tabletops for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we managed to get some really good, I think, official um, VTT support on Roll Twenty um, and on the Foundry. And um, so there are two platforms. They both do things a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. I think if you like one, um, that's probably the only one you want to use. So we're, we're trying to be in as many places as possible. Mm. Um, so uh, as you mentioned, Mooman uh, Russell is his, is his name. Did excellent work on um, 
I just always know him as Moo Man because it just yeah. worked, that's, yeah. 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 it's very much a gamer thing. You're never your actual name. It's yeah. always a variation of things. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Name. Exactly. Yeah. So um, he did an excellent mo uh, module for Warmer Fantasy Roleplay on the Foundry VTT, and we're really happy to be able to integrate that in to have um, official support and, and endorsements. So um, that's been going really well. He's got the core book on there. He's got the starter wow. set. He's got awesome. um, Enemy in Shadows on there as well. Um, so there's a there's a ton of stuff, and uh, the the keys are available for that from ourselves. You could get like only the GM needs to actually purchase them. You get yeah. everything that you would get basically in the PDF, but uh, suited for VTT. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're they're a really good uh, way to play the game. I play Warframe right now. Yeah, um, Rough Nights is on there as well. Actually. And Rough Nights is on there as well. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Fantastic. So you can uh, have your a... your. If really you want to explore like the, the tree feathers, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, the clock. The clock was fun. We were we were yeah. kind of experimenting with what things we can do for VTTs that we couldn't do on the tabletop. So there's a little yeah. clock, and you can increment it to show the uh. time. Because anyone who's played that without spoilers will know that mm -hmm. there's several things happening yeah, on key a key things at key points. Key, yeah, exactly. Key yeah. schedules. So everybody yeah. needs to know the time because somebody is going to burst out of that room at that time to do that thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's really nice. Gra Graham does, did a very interesting job with that. Um, uh with how those those scenarios are written and they, they come out so well um and then on roll 20 which i think is like more people might be familiar with yeah. um we all we have the core up right now there as well and we will very soon have the starter set and rough nights hard days available on there as well so that's another good place to dive in um and enjoy uh, warmer fantasy roleplay right now given the times we're living in um and Roll20 is very nice. You only need the browser. There's no mm -hmm. client to download. It's it's yes. another experience. It's another platform for it. And uh, I think you get like the character mancer with that and tokens and all that kind of stuff. The yeah, you get a lot of tokens and you get the character sheet. You get the rules mm -hmm. and so on. The character mancer is actually something that will be coming in the future. I don't know if this mm -hmm. is, we're announcing for it now. This is now announced. This yeah. is just yes. me not remembering <laughs> because there's too many things going on. <laughs> sure, sure. So many so, exciting things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if yeah. you if you've made your character in more fancy roleplay, you know that it's like I don't want to say complex, but it's got like a nice bit of crunch and detail there. Mm -hmm. Um, so there will be a character mancer roll twenty that leads you through that, and you can make your decisions like. I want to roll this randomly and get my bonus XP, or I want to select from a, a list of three and get less, or, mm -hmm. you know, it, it'll lead you through all the choices you need to make a character. Um, and I love character answers and I love making characters, so I'm very excited about that, just to be like... Yeah. It's a really nice way of doing it. We use Roll20. We use it for D&D for &D at the moment, but having something like that for Warhammer Fantasy role players is amazing because you're like, ah, oh, what if I just tweak this or what if those there? And oh, actually, these are the options. Mm -hmm. So I'm very much more of normally, I like the fluff and the story rather than the crunch. But actually, using Roll20 over the last nearly a year, I've got a much better appreciation for the crunch. It's like, ah, oh, that's the thing that goes on there. And now I remember this and here's where the stuff goes. And actually, I find it's a very good way of learning the system is because you have yeah. it here and it sort of holds your hand as you go through it as well. Yeah, exactly. It can take away some of that that heavy lifting, as it were, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Some people enjoy it and some people just want to get to the yeah. story. Um, yeah. And part of the narrative I love is, is again, rolling up the random characters and then trying to figure out how mm -hmm. they got there. Yes. Um, and I said the last thing to say about it is all that, that character mancer is optional. So if you want to um, create a character that kind of breaks the rules a little bit, as we've them written, that's fine. We don't want to constrain anybody. Yeah. So you can make a dwarf wizard if you really want to yeah. um that's yeah don't yeah. don't uh yeah that's not it's an approval from a, but dwarfs are magic i'm just saying you yeah. could do it yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. but no i think it, 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 the, this yeah. year and how everything has gone you can see the the response to the release of roll 20 and foundry has been mm -hmm. absolutely phenomenal i think yeah. beyond what we would we would have expected it's it's, it's been incredible so like people it's where people are playing at the moment. Um, yes. I know obviously people were playing online a lot anyway. I mean, I played online even before this. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now so many people have moved their games online. It's important for us to be able to, to support that. Yeah. As, as a GM, I have been largely enjoying not having to take a giant backpack across town <laughs> with, with online gaming. It's been really good. The trick good. is to make people come to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that means I have to tidy my living room. That's fair, yeah. Yeah. So if I can if I can head out to to a game shop and run it there for for a couple of hours, they have to do all the tidying up, and that's brilliant. <laughs> um, but yeah, the 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 things like Foundry and um, and Roll Twenty have been a boon to my my shoulders, at the very least, to have all that kind of stuff. Um, and with the journals and things on on them, where you can look up things 
much quicker as a as a GM looking for. I I, I remember the NPC's name. Quick, let's let's find the that kind yeah. of stuff. Or yeah. or like you were mentioning in some of the adventures. I know something happens in the next section. Quick, what what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even yeah. speaking from like playing D anD D for for years, you know, it's like, oh well, this monster is in the monster manual, and this monster is in this other book, and this monster is in this other book. So now I have three books open in front of me. Whereas, you know, obviously with Warfare, you can just go tap tap and open the, the various different monster stat blocks that you need and the character stat blocks and stuff. Yeah, I, I would see even like I, I know a lot of people integrate VTT tools into their um into their in person games uh, mm, yeah. as well. Like and I know I do I, I for D anD D as well. Uh, so. Uh, and I look forward to doing it more in, in Wolfrop when I have time to be a player again in a game of <laughs> yes. Wolfrop. I'd, I'd pay good money. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Um, and we have some new stuff coming for Roll20 as well, which I don't think we've announced. <gasps> Park, I'll let you... I won't steal your thunder. You go for it. Oh, well, I, I think I, I mentioned it earlier, but we will have the starter set and Rough Nights and Hard Days coming um, quite soon. And I, I meant to mention the developer on that, Nick Bradley, who's also a pleasure to work with. Had a great yeah, time yeah. as a developer. So nice. uh, thank you, Nick. Um, but he'll, 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 he's working on those, and I'm. It should be like early January for one, and then early February for the other. That should be. Oh, that's out. soon. That's oh, good. That's yeah, really yeah, good. yeah. We're trying to accelerate things along, and it's been interesting to us to find a workflow that works mm. to get take our product, turn it into a virtual tabletop with, you know, skills and expertises we don't necessarily have in house. So it's been a learning experience, but I think we've pretty nice workflow for that now. So who yeah. knows what other things you might see on VTTs from us too. Oh, that's exciting! That's exciting. That's very cool. Um, so, so with the, we were mentioning like with Whip and some of the the, the campaigns and things. Um, I I have mentioned I think at least once before on stream the the Enemy in the Shadows campaign that I was very excited to receive um, a while ago. Um, what's happening there? What's what's going on with with more Whip Rip campaigns and things? So, um, I, well, we have to talk about the enemy within, uh, at least briefly. Um, so, yeah, the enemy in shadows are the first part of that. It's a five-part series. They're, um, each book has an, an, its core adventure book, which is mm -hmm. all you technically need to play. And that's like a 160-page hardcover book. Um, and then you have the 128-page hardcover companion, which contains like extra stuff. So um, sometimes it's like careers or more about the... Um, various enemies you would face uh, mm. things for like additional rules like the trading rules in, in Death of the Reich's Companion for example mm -hmm. so right now out in print we have um, Enemy in Shadows and that's available in Standard and I, it was available in Collector's Editions I don't know if there's any left um, mm. but that that's out and available right now Death of the Reich is available for pre-order so if you buy it or its companion now you get the PDFs um, and that's with our printer we, we for various reasons, uh, some of them involving COVID, we uh, moved to a, a, another large printer with more bandwidth, basically, to mm -hmm. get our stuff through. Um, because you know we, we've been struggling with logistics and print and everything that the whole world has been struggling with in yes. the hell year. Yeah. So um, <laughs> we needed to take some logistics out for that. And I think we've nailed it now. So I have all of the physical dummies for Death and the Reich here beside me. They've just been approved. They're very nice. Awesome. It's, it's so funny when I was on the call on Monday, I think maybe they yeah. arrived. I was like, it's just a blank book, but we're like, oh, <laughs> the, end of the paper is red. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so we, we wanted to, I know that if people have one part of a five part collector's edition, they would be very upset if there was like even a slight difference. So we've really been nailing that it's exactly the same. Um, oh, so that, that's that, very good. Yeah, so that, that will be printed and will be on boats um, quite quite soon. I think, uh, like, in January, it should be on a boat, basically. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. So that that will be heading to... The, now, there's a whole distribution chain thing that happens then, so don't... The boat don't, will yeah, not okay. come to your um, house. <laughs> step away from the letterbox, folks. Yeah, exactly. But step away be, from the letterbox. Um, they'll be here soon. Um, so the next part is Power Behind the Throne, which... Mm -hmm. um, Every time I do a part, I'm like, yeah, this is my favorite part of The Enemy Within. Um, <laughs> so I love the enemy, <laughs> working in The Enemy in Shadows Companion. Um, then Death on the Reich, I was like, yeah, Death on the Reich is the best part. And now with Empire Behind the Throne, I'm like, no, this no, is the this best, was part, the best part, clearly. <laughs> um, so that's been That's exciting. awesome, though, because you're so immersed in it, and yet you're very excited about um, the thing that you've done and the thing you're bringing to people. You can't not be excited about it. Like, when you... Uh, <laughs> I've been playing it since I was a teenager. Um, it's very exciting. Wow. I've been able to bring like some of my professional skills into the development. And I think in the last few months, we've like there was a ramp up, and 2020 was 2020. Um, yes. But I think we've hit a really, really good pace in recent months, and we, we're set to con continue that. So, aside from Power Behind the Throne, Midnight City, The White Wolf is up, up for pre order, and that's relevant mm. because 
um, Power Behind the Throne takes place in and around Middenheim. I'm, I really don't want to get too into the spoilers on, on the stream, but if you're interested in running Power Behind the Throne, Middenheim is a good buy. That's not the companion volume for um, The Enemy Within. There's a separate Power Behind the Throne and it has a companion as well. But Middenheim is a city guide to Middenheim, which is Ulrich's favorite city. It's um, an ancient city built on the Fauschlag, a mountain that was struck flat by the uh, hand or half of the axe of Ulrich himself. Uh, it's so it's like really detailed it's a great book there's been so many writers that have worked on it it brings um, a lot of older material from first and second edition up and updates it um, for fourth edition as well as some new writing a ton of new NPCs uh, new locations there's a beautiful new map that mine hasn't arrived yet by the way <laughs> so don't if you haven't gotten your Middenheim City of the White Wolf map and I haven't got mine either, so that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. don't don't feel too bad. But um, they're literally on a pallet and will be distributing quite soon. Uh, so it's I, I really think that's a lovely book. Um, it's a good buy right now if you're thinking of doing Power by the Throne. And if you're not, it's still a great city guide if you want to get out of the Reichland, where a lot of our material has been set, um, head up north and have a different flavour. Like the north is a bit colder and a bit harsher, if that's mm -hmm. possible, uh, than the Reichland. Wow, yeah. So that's a good place to be. Power Behind the Throne will be out very, very soon for pre-order, which means the PDF will be order available as well for the um, the adventure book. And the companion will be out not too long after it at all um, in PDF as well. So those are those are looking quite good and tipping along nicely. And then next year we'll be looking at The Horned Rat, which I know a lot of people are, are excited oh, for. Oh, very yeah. cool. Yeah. It's part four. It's it's new. Um, the seed of it was, was, was planted many, many years ago when The Enemy Within was first being done. But... Mm -hmm. um a different something rotten in kislev was part four yeah. and uh graham's vision for for the enemy within campaign involved actually a different campaign for part four so that's the horned rat uh, and that's pretty exciting too it's full mm. of the skaven who i have a i mean is that a spoiler if it's called the horned rat i think you should know um, <laughs> there's, there's quite should a, be a little skaven are involved <laughs> um and I, sorry I what a, I, uh, you're lying there yeah, no, exactly. No, there's nothing so, like that. Get a, go, what? go away. Go to stop so, it. So I have yeah. a soft spot for them, and I'm fairly sure that by the time that's like I see the first draft of the layout, and I'll be like, no, this is my favorite part now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Part I have fond that's memories awesome. of Talapheim, and then also being kicked out of Talapheim for the cheek of mentioning such things. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no, no such thing. There no are rats thing. of uh, beastmen with rat headed beastmen sometimes, and sometimes there's rats of unusual size, but there's no, no. such thing. <laughs> yeah. Always um, rodents of unusual size. <laughs> yes. So, so while we're talking about um, WFRP, um, we, we have a question. Um, we're printing some in incredible adventures and some, some incredible um, setting content. Um, are there any plans for some, some more player facing kind of content? Not now, or just in general, what, what's happening with, with player side stuff? Yes, so um, yeah, players need stuff, basically. I'm well aware of that. So Archives of the Empire will be out soon. It does have a lot of still GM facing stuff. There's a lot of setting material on um, a dwarf hold on uh, the related to the Lower Lorn and related to the Moot, which I think are really, really nice write-ups. Oh, yeah. um, the Moot and stuff in particular, I have a soft spot for because I, I, I enjoy the sense of humor that halflings have i think mm -hmm. i share a little bit of it i hope um but that contains some new careers um specific to each species um, mm. it contains um some new items against an equipment specific to each species so that will give i think halfling elf and dwarf players something like a little teaser um of of more things to come in that regard uh, i know that there are people out there crying for dwarf and elf content mm. in particular uh, you have been heard um We'll also have a new magic book next year, which is you know, essentially a, play, a player facing uh, item as well. And it is packed with spells, uh, expanded careers for all of the uh, wizards of different colors and the different color, like different winds. And the there's some new dark magic in there as well. And a couple of bits I'm not going to announce yet that are like different. And I don't think you've seen them before. Yeah. Um, so exciting to. We'll tease more of that later on, um, but that's that's quite player focused as well. If you've been waiting for like, if you really need eighty more spells, uh, for example, <laughs> that's which, which obviously we do. Power behind the throne, isn't there? Sorry, I that. there's a new career in Power Behind the Throne, isn't there? Did I there's a, there's a new career in Minheim and um, Wolfkin, and there's yes. a new career in the Power Behind the Throne Companion, and um, the Companion careers are in an odd. They I love them because they let you build really detailed uh, villainous NPCs. 
Mm. Uh, and when, by the time it's done, you could pick them up and make a very villainous party. Um, but they, they probably, I, you know, the cut mages I've seen <laughs> from enemy shadows. Yeah, it's going to be a difficult, it's going to be a little difficult to work in um, to as your standard campaign. But by the time the enemy within is done, uh, I mean, you could probably play the other side of it if you wanted to. That's very cool. That's an interesting the heroes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Interesting take I mean, on it. Without the worrying conversation of are we the baddies, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, they don't they're not worried about that. <laughs> they, they know. It's fine. <laughs> Someone has to usher in the end times, it might as well be. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> might as well be yeah, yeah, yeah. That's excellent. Um so um I've also seen um because I was I was cheekily looking through the, the photos that I've been sent. There is um ooh, where is it gone? Let me bring it back. Um yeah open that folder too um what is um what is one shots of the reichland what is this so, yeah one shots of the reichland it's pdf release it's up now on um cubicle 7 games.com and on drive to rpg it's five um short punchy scenarios that build on locations we previously touched on in buildings of the reichland and um, mm -hmm. it's it's a very packed pdf for for, for just like five dollars um, i think it's like 20 something pages like no, 30 something, excuse me. Uh, and they're all, um, it's five adventures that are meant to be played in like a single session. They're very punchy, they're direct to the point, they're packed with puns, if you like that kind of thing. There's an adventure of cheese puns. And just dive in. <laughs> um, they're written by the very talented Kieran O'Brien, who did a uh, lovely job on it. He's been writing for like Irish convention scenes and various other things for years. Um, mm. So we, we kind of tapped him to pull him in on this and he did an excellent job. Um, for me, Woofrup is like, it's grim and it's perilous but you need the little touch of humor to offset how terrible it is. Like you have yes. to, you're, if your character cannot embrace Gallo's humor, they will, they're in for a hard time. You need to be yeah. able to, to laugh at is it. That, is that squaddy humor, that uh, that kind of thing where you know that you're in the, you're in complete mess, but uh, yeah, just exactly. gonna get through it together. You know? Exactly, so there, there's a yeah. couple of adventures in there that like I think underscore that really nicely. And then there's some that are just, you know, grim and, uh, interesting and uh, I, I think he did a really nice job so that's like I think it's been it's number one on drive through RPG under... if we go to drive through now there's a lot of woofer up there I think like yeah, yeah we're, we're is number four one shots is number eight Midheim, uh, then one shots is number one under five hell rides to halt has come back that's in number seven now so there's a lot of woofer up there on the home page wow. yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. so they're, they're nice they're, they're they're nice little adventures I mean they're they're, they're quick um I, I think they're an easy buy I mean obviously give us your money but um, <laughs> I do think that they're good value um, for like a, a really nice entertaining adventure, you know. So um, I, I really liked One Shots uh, and I really liked Hell Rides to Hot as well. Um, Chris, it's Chris a nice intro to people who job. don't necessarily know the universe or are making the jump from yeah. I have a ton of these figures and battle armies and stuff. What are you guys doing? Because I recognize the language, but I don't know what you're doing. Is that great move into yeah, role playing yeah. as, as part of the storytelling of your game? Yeah. yeah definitely um I, I like i you know i've really i don't play as much of the battle game as i did when i was younger i play more role playing games now and that's my thing and that's probably yeah. fine that i'm focused on that yeah. <laughs> but uh i did i always used to inject the narrative into my units and i like, individually named all my space greens at one point uh, awesome I still have them <laughs> love it. and some of them are still unpainted and <laughs> yeah, but, of course um, they are, yes I, I love that narrative element <laughs> and if you like doing that and i think yeah like games workshop has done a great job of like writing up the battle reports and having a backstory for them that mm. if you enjoyed that i mean have a look at role-playing games because it's just that on um, taken to the nth degree and um i mean uh, that's that's how role-playing games started in the first place uh it's a mm. natural pathway to go and the adventures are a nice way to if you, if you don't feel confident gming them pick up a pre-written adventure read it through yeah. a couple of times and you'll know more or less you know um what you need to do and i, I think the starter set for Woofer, um and equally the starter set for age of sigmar to mm. segue away because i can talk uh, as you may have noticed, <laughs> to segue a little bit away from me, the starter stuff from Age of Sigmar does an equally good job of getting you into these settings. Um, and even if you are very familiar with role-playing games or the setting, the starter mm -hmm. set for Wolfram is packed with content, loads of stuff about Uber's Reich um, as a setting, uh, which is a city in the Reichland, uh, oh, a large town slash city in, in the Reichland, uh, loads mm -hmm. of interesting NPCs, and it is packed with plot hooks um, mm -hmm. and a ton of like one-page adventures at the back, plus uh, doing the rounds, which is a great... Just the starter sets are good. Great, great, great starting point, which is why we're yeah. excited to have them on the VTTs as well. Yeah, it is. A, it is a moment to to maybe move over to the to the other settings because 
I mean, I think we've, we've had a good... <laughs> no, no, well, not at all. I personally <laughs> did happily <laughs> chat about this, um, and I think Kate's probably going to have to kick us off the call later on if she wants to get back to work, because <laughs> I will will happily go on and on about it. But um, there have been some chats on the... on the uh, some messages on the Twitch chat asking about um, some of the other, other settings. Um, so, so for us uninitiated um, who are firmly stuck in in not Skaven land, uh, what else have we have we got on offer? Uh, yeah, so we have Age of Sigmar Soulbound, which is, has come about from the end uh, the the end times of the old world. Um, so Age of Sigmar was a um, new uh, Games Workshop game launched in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, and Game Workshop asked us, um, along with doing uh, Warframe Fourth Edition, asked us to if we'd be interested in tackling the Age of Sigmar role playing game. Which, of course, we said absolutely yes. Yeah. Um, so Soulbound is the culmination of that. We released the core book in May of last year. Um, the due to various printing and shipping and all that fun stuff uh, around this year, it's landing in shops now. So um, our direct orders have been fulfilled over the last month or two. Um, and it should be in all game stores um, across the UK and Europe um, now or very soon. Awesome. Mm. Um, in the US, it's um, I think it's on a truck. It's off a boat and on a truck going to the <laughs> distribution center. And from there, um, our partners will start to ship it out and it'll land in game stores and stuff. So it should be available before Christmas, um, which is great. Um, so yeah, last time I think we chatted in August, we had launched the starter. We had launched the core book, and um, mm. we put up pre-orders for our first adventure, Shadow mm -hmm. of the Mist. Um, and then since then, we've launched the starter set. So building in the vein of the Wolfrop starter set, we have a forty-eight page adventure that teaches you bit by bit how to play. Um, then awesome. we have a sixty-four page city guide, which gives you a new just a city to explore, really really detailed city, like you get in the Uber's Reich in the starter set. We have mm -hmm. the city of Brightspear. Um, which has loads of information on the NPCs, um, really interesting locations. Um, and then that comes with eight more adventure hooks to expand out your adventures after you get through the starter set. Yeah. And we have, you know, handouts, rules reference, tokens, uh, pre-generated characters, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you pre-order the physical, uh, pre-order it from us now, um, you get the PDF straight away. Uh, it comes with eight beautiful Q workshop dice um, who don't do some incredible work. I'm sure everyone knows. Are those are, are those the D6s that I, I have a yes, picture of? Okay. They are, I'll yeah. Show, they have show this folks them now. The them. beautiful twiddly twiddly. I do like cute workshop yeah, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> they're really, really nice. Um, yeah. So, yeah, if you if you pre order with us, you get um, the you get the PDF straight away. If you buy the PDF, PDF is only $15, I think, on our own store or on drive through, which is just ludicrous for the amount of content that's packed in there <laughs> same as with the the warhammer the wolf of starter set as well um so that's out now again we've changed uh, to our new printer to help with demand so that should be shipping i think should land in stores late q1 early q2 next year because obviously with um the starter set there's far more components and the dice have to get from q workshop to the printer the printer has to bag them up and get them on a boat yeah. and all that kind of stuff so and they'd be well traveled by the time they yes <laughs> um so yeah that's the the starter set which is our, our recent big launch um going back to when we chatted in august we had put up the pre-order for shadows in the mist which is mm. our first campaign for um for soulbound which is actually set in the city of anvilgard and for anyone who follows the age of sigmar battle game will know that terrible things are happening in Anvilgard at the it's, it's not great there right now no no <laughs> we no. think we've got problems here it's nothing compared to there <laughs> yeah yeah so if you pick up yeah. Broken Realms Marathi which is the new um, new Age of Sigmar book from, from Games Workshop um, that has tons of stuff in there which is really interesting Shadows in the Mist our, um, our book is set before the events of that and that actually you'll see a lot of characters and a lot of places that lead into that it is its own story um, mm. but it is leads into what happens and it'll make you go oh i see um when you actually if you read both of them kind of back to back that's um, very that's... cool someone in the chat has has just a darker days radio has just read anvil god stands just <laughs> so... barely yeah <laughs> yeah under, under marathi's <laughs> control <laughs> um so yeah that has um six adventures in it um wow. which are really nice so we've released the first two which are blood tide and rotten to the core the, which you can get um, if you pre-order the whole thing you get the new PDFs as they come out um, or if you just want to pick them up bit by bit you can pick them up either as their standalone PDFs on our own website or on drive-through 
Mm -hmm. um, so you have Blood Tide, then Rotten to the Core. The next adventure, Crucible of Life, will be out very soon. Um, that's going well. It's kind of through layout and proofing, so we're hoping to have that out in the next few weeks. Mm. The, but we also have the Anvil Guard City Guide, which is built in the same vein of the Bright Spear Guide that comes with the, the core, or sorry, with the starter set, which gives you more information on the city and locations and things. And it's just a really nice city guide to set your games in. Um, and then you can go, oh, that's that's probably gone now, actually, because it's been destroyed by Marathi. But um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's really nice in that the, um, the full book will have information on, which we couldn't mention before, <laughs> uh, but it will have information on Anvil Guard after the fall. So what it looks like after Marathi has taken over and it's now Harkurin uh, and run by the, the Daughters of Cain uh, and the Idonis. So we have a question from um, from Hilda Owen in chat. And like, did you know Anvil Guard was going to be such a focus of the Marathi storyline when you were developing it? Was it a lovely coincidence? Have you had to like sit there biting your tongue at any point? Uh, yes, that second one. <laughs> 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 No, we're lucky enough that, uh, you know, we chat to Games Workshop a lot and they're they're very open with kind of letting us know what's coming and, and, and letting us tie into that. Because, you know, if they're going somewhere to explore, it's going to be really fun for mm. for us to do. So, um, so it's really nice to have that relationship there where we're able to, to um, get heads up on some of that stuff and, and have some stuff in development for that, which is which is really lovely. Um, so, yeah, so Anvil Guard, uh, that will kind of lead into Broken Realms and, and you can play through that before the, the fall of <laughs> the fall of Anvil Guard. Or try and reclaim it because uh, we're going to be putting in some short adventures set after the fall, kind Ooh. of one-page adventures where you might have to go in and rescue people that you met during the course of your your campaign. Nice. Which would be really really nice. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the the stuff we have at the moment for Soulbound. Mm -hmm. um, coming up that we've been teasing for a while, we have the cover there for Champions of Order, mm -hmm. um, which is our big player-facing book going back to players wanting options. I I knew that demand was coming. I've seen it happen <laughs> with Wolfrop, so I was trying to get ahead of it. Um, so that introduces a, a new faction, the Lumineth Realm Lords. Again, if people know the game, they are the Teclian uh, elves, heavily steeped in magic. Um, mm. So the book introduces new archetypes for the Lumineth, but also new ar archetypes for um, all the other factions. It introduces sub factions um, for those who play the battle game. You'll know that you know you don't just have Stormcast Eternals. You have different Storm hosts, which have their own personalities and that kind of thing. So um, each of those gives you another, essentially, a free talent. For anyone who played the game so there's about 50 of those then there's another 100 talents in the book there's wow. another 50 miracles and there's another 50 spells and then there's endeavors that you can do during your downtime and, and all that kind of stuff so there's a yeah it, it's jam-packed full of stuff um that's an awesome uh, amount of choice as well it's not yeah. like oh yeah here's one or two it's like all those things you're agonizing about yeah let's just put a ton yeah. more on there and then yeah, put exactly, it a different yeah. set so <laughs> that's great for customization that's great for like really making it your own your own character yeah absolutely things. it's uh, I, I think it, it's i've been i've obviously read through it um i think it's really really strong i think people are going to really like it because it gives you more information about the world and the people yeah. and it gives you that bit more customization so um that probably won't make it out before christmas it's very close but just obviously with the holidays and and everything else that we have going on it'll more than likely be very early next year um but uh, but cool. it, it's going well it's it started layout and chapters are through editing all that kind of stuff. so uh, so it's going really well um, and i'll just keep awesome. talking unless there's questions because I, I there's gonna... a couple more bits that i can just run <laughs> no through really no quick. tell us more <laughs> um so we have a couple of pdfs that we haven't announced Mm -hmm. um that we can announce now i guess um wicked uh the we have a pdf coming out very soon called streets of bright spear which actually kind of follows on from the starter set um which myself and elaine lithgow one of our one of our uh, developers in-house um who's based up in dundee um elaine has done some great writing for us in the past she wrote our free crash and burn adventure um mm. and together we we've written um streets of bright spear as much as I wrote a little bit, and then I, I, Elaine was able to do the rest, basically. <laughs> um, but this will give people um, who want to keep adventuring in Bright Spear, they can. Um, it has, oh god, like eight pages of new endeavors, which are kind of things you can do in your downtime between adventures, little things you can undertake, which helps you build the world and is very much tied into that storytelling and world building. Um, my favorite one in it for anyone who knows Bright Spear, Bright Spear is basically a city built like an orrery. Mm -hmm. So it has yes. these globes rolling, rotating around it that are the, the realms. There's one that represents the realm of chaos, which has been shattered. Um, but you, during your downtime, you can go and explore that. You forget what happened over the course of that week. But at the end of the week, you know a chaos spell. 
So you oh, know, like wow. a spell of Nurgle or Tsim or Slanesh or the Great mm. Horned Rat to give its full title. Um, <laughs> Don't know what you. So you really got a lot of presumptions. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which sides as well? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and clearly, your GM isn't gonna, you know, make sure that that comes back to bite you in the bum afterwards. Yeah, at exactly. Some point. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So for anyone who's played the game, they know that we have this thing called Doom, which represents the bad badness in the world and things get worse and worse and you can do stuff to decrease decrease doom mm. if you go off and learn one of these chaos spells doom goes up by one <laughs> that's it. oops um so we have like some really nice stuff in there that kind of plays with that a little bit um a couple of different things that we have elaine has done some absolutely wonderful tables on generating magic items essentially because oh, cool. there's this hidden under city under bright spear yes. and elaine just created these tables that can output like hundreds of permutations of magic items wow. each with their own traits and eccentricities and stuff. it's really really wonderful um some really really great stuff in there for that um so that should be out soon it's actually it's in proofing at the moment so it'll be out in like the next week or so hopefully oh before christmas um, yeah absolutely yeah, awesome. yeah so that'll be out before yeah. christmas which is great um uh that should be really nice uh then we have a, another pdf coming out called doomed lands again building on doom that we've talked about before this is um locations across the seven mortal realms so excluding azir which is the realm of heaven because mm. sigmar doesn't deal with that he doesn't let that happen yeah. um but uh, across the, the seven mortal realms these um different locations that are affected as doom gets higher so uh, yeah. as it's at one everything's kind of fine as it gets to five you know the water starts to boil and becomes hazardous and when it gets up to 10 it's literally just stuff that starts exploding everywhere and, and, right yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh really nice stuff that um the GMs can drop into their campaign to really reinforce, you know, things are getting bad. But you also yeah. have this nice thing where if you make a difference, oh, things are actually getting better. You know, the, the seas have stopped boiling. That must be a good sign. Um, That's very so, good. It gives your players agency as well so that the things you do actually matter. Yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's um, that should be really nice. And then the last thing I will talk about um, is we have very something i'm very excited about which is we have a new adventure coming out um and for halloween we released an adventure called fateful night which mm -hmm. was set in bright spear some ghosts came along and you had to kind of deal with it hmm. so for uh, the holiday season we have an adventure called, called uh trouble brewing and anyone who again is aware of the the battle game will know that uh Bugman has returned to the mortal realms. So you have Jacob Bugmanson the 11th. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> he has, uh, I actually have him over here <laughs> just off screen. Um, Very cool model. So yeah. cool. It's so cool. Yeah. But um, we're releasing a holiday adventure that is basically Bugmanson comes to Bright Spear and you basically go on a pub crawl with him. Nice. And that's pretty much the adventure. But, you know, that's someone, awesome. <laughs> someone tries to steal the, the Bugman 6X and you have to you have to deal with it. Um, but that's within wonderful. that. We've also included a new archetype, so you can play as a brewmaster. So you Ooh. can you get your car drawn rig, and you have a keg on your back, and you can spray <laughs> beer in people's face to blind them. <laughs> you can essentially make magic beer that will heal you, or you know, um, increase your attack and all that kind of stuff. So that that's a lot of fun. So that should be coming out before Christmas as well. Nice. Um, and that's, that's very very cool. That's everything we have that at the moment that I'm going to talk about. But uh, in the new year, we'll have even more for Soulbound that we can chat about. Um, Amazing. We'll have some art reveals on our own blog for on Monday for um, some of the new archetypes for Champions of Order. So keep an eye out for that. For oh, that. yes, cool. awesome. very I should awesome. say actually the collector's edition, which I have here. <gasps> I'm just going to show off. I don't know. Oh, if yeah, it's got like a nice shiny. Better. Yeah. Lovely yeah. spot UV on the cover there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we have the, the standard edition here, which also looks beautiful. That looks I'm trying to as look well. myself and stream and see if I can actually see it. Yeah, yeah no, you're yeah, good. Yeah, all good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can see the it has this lovely leather leatherette oh, with that's uh, the, good. the, the, the oh, hammer the and, and everything. Yeah. Like yeah oh, can... Lovely little ribbons to mark your pages. Yes, and... very important. Very yes, important. yes. Uh, so I that's, like that's that. available. Um, from our store at the moment. God, don't drop it on the ground. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's only when you want to get that returned, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's damaged, if it's already at home. Scratch and dent. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why I have this copy. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of print copies, we also for um, 40k we have our Wrath and Glory line. So, again, print delays, shipping delays, all that kind of stuff. It pre-orders should be shipping now from our uh, direct orders from. Uh, for UK and Europe, um, the 
folks are on a boat as well or have docked they might be waiting on a truck um <laughs> it, it's amazing day. how much we've had to learn about boats <laughs> this is, uh... <laughs> who knew it would be so hard to get a truck like we're actually considering buying a branded c7 truck to, wow. <laughs> to that's amazing that, like. <laughs> um but uh but yeah that should land in game stores uh in january um unfortunately we we have missed the christmas period due, due to various um the ports ports being packed generally at this time of year but also yes. with covid and everything but we do have the lovely core book here as well which has that nice, nice. spot uv i'm not sure if you can still try and yeah yeah we can. it is it is a yeah. terrific book that was that was my big uh purchase it is it Gen is Con, a mighty tome yeah. yeah yeah it's it's there's loads and loads of things in it so very exciting yeah really really fantastic um so sorry we're my seven power can both talk for talk for Ireland as they say. That's, no, yeah. no, it's all good. I was just um, I was um, there. There are a bunch of chaps who do some some actual plays. Um, one of them, um, Garblag Games. I don't know whether you've heard of them. Oh yeah, yeah. But oh, they've yeah, started we... referring to Wrath and Glory with the the Frank Sinatra theme. Wrath and glory, wrath and, yeah. and and that's it. Any time I see the cover for it now, that's all I can hear in my head. Wrath. And Great. Glory. Thank you for bestowing that gift upon us. I, I want I to know what the next line is. Like, yeah. what, what does this come together like? I, the, um. I think I think there's something written in their Discord for it. I will um I will go out and find it and um forward it to you at Please, another time. Somebody wrath send that to me. That yeah. That's um, fantastic. Um, that's but yeah, now now you can't see. I've shared that for you. Happy Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Gift from, gift um, from those chaps. Um, so yeah, coming for uh, sorry, I'll, I'll scoot through this quickly. I know we have to finish up. No, um, cool. The we have uh, for Wrath and Glory, we have the Forsaken System Players Guide, mm. um, which has new archetypes, um, new uh, frameworks, uh, and then information on various different worlds like Agri Worlds and all that kind of stuff. And it's absolutely stunning art within it. So that's going through layout at the moment. Um, I was really good, hoping to get that out before Christmas, but obviously they'll keep people updated. Um, going really, awesome. really well. And then coming after that, we have Litanies of the Lost, which is our first kind of adventure compendium for um, for Wrath and Glory as well. Um, so what we'll be doing is similar to what we did with Shadows in the Mist. We'll be putting up a pre-order for that. And mm -hmm. then as the PDFs of each adventure release, um, you'll get them. So the first adventure for that is Due to Beyond Death, written by Elaine Lithgow, uh, who I mentioned already. Um, mm -hmm. Elaine has done some awesome adventure which is basically an action horror crawl through a servitor manufactorum um, oh, wow which is a ton of that's fun. gonna be so, spooky as hell yeah, yeah. It's, that, it's gonna be really really great um elaine is an absolutely fantastic writer uh so that's yeah that's gonna be really really nice and then we have um, obviously i think four more adventures coming in that book as well um as they, and they'll be released gradually as as they're completed as well yeah, that first adventure has like a great mechanic of like random, uh, pseudo random spooky things that can be going on for various reasons. It makes sense, and mm. they're actually great. You could pull them out and use them in any um, any Wrath and Glory game set in like old abandoned uh, industrial buildings, which feels like half of them. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good good one to pick up for that alone. That's very very cool. Wow, so that is very cool. So so much stuff happening yeah sorry yeah. so many <laughs> i actually no, didn't even mention the wolfrop stuff that would be out before christmas i did actually after all the trouble of donna and marketing went to get me a nice list of things i told totally yeah. <laughs> well, we do still have a minute so so what are appetites what are super appet quick so archives of the empire is already up for pre-order and the pdf for that will go out to anyone who pre-ordered it before christmas so you will have that this month and um, power behind the throne volume three will be out for pre-order as well and um, before christmas awesome. and you'll get the pdf when it's up as well um, and we'll put the companion up for pre-order at the same time so you can save on shipping, but you'll get the companion PDF in January. Nice. So that's what's going on there. And we'll have another, Uber, there's a, our series of adventures, Uber Jack Adventures 2 is due an adventure. It's been due for a while, in fact, but we'll have that out to you as well in January, which um, is a nice one. I'm really proud of the cover art. And when you see it, hopefully you can figure out why. Um, I seen it that's, yet, yeah, so um, we've been, I've been joined on, on Wolfrop, uh, we've been joined in Cubicle 7 by Dave Allen, who did a ton of work on Midnight, so much so yes. the fact that we were like, why, he's already doing so much work for us, it feels bad that he doesn't just work for Cubicle 7, so <laughs> we pulled in Dave Allen and uh, he's been doing great work at like helping me get things along and um, so yeah, stuff is, is landing pretty rapidly now and we'll continue to do so. Yeah, that's that's tremendous. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming for 
for uh for Wolfram. for all yeah. everything we're all fr <laughs> frantically <laughs> yeah. trying to get as much done as possible digital dryad has actually asked in the chat is like do, do you guys sleep at all because uh, no, it's loose. I don't want to both have young kids. So <laughs> yeah, what is this word? <laughs> sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, 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 we just roll on our own endeavor tables for each each respective line and uh, that's amazing. Oh, I take a restful <laughs> endeavor back to the computer. Sleep is for sleep is for the week. <laughs> yes. Sleep is for the week and those without small small children, yes. Exactly. That's very yeah. much it. Oh, two hours sleep. Wow, what a night's sleep. <laughs> what a night. Yeah. You're both looking very bright and shiny as a result. Oh, so. I have a makeup artist on on deck. <laughs> no, I'm sponsored by a major coffee brand, so excellent. <laughs> That's it. It's kind of like right. I, I I need a filter for this current Zoom call yeah, because yeah, wow, yeah. You know? oh. that's amazing. Gosh. Oh dear. Gosh, there's That's so much, cool. so much stuff, and and it's yeah. good to see in the Twitch chat like folks seem so excited super um keen. super keen uh lots of stuff coming uh virtual tabletop more virtual yes. tabletop more new woofer more of everything and um very pretty dice yes yes, yes. I, I like the uh so sanjiro sanjiro tokagi i apologize if i've said that wrong and no one ever has an easy handle online it's always really difficult it's um, never like bill yeah. no no and uh, i wanted mine to be kate k8 or katie but then their lemmings you know it's all changed so uh they reckon the the next warham game all the realms including chaos brew their own beer for the upcoming festival and there's obviously some sort of festival so may, maybe we'll do that one round towards beer festivals either october next year or or summer festivals as we tend to have so. yeah we have a couple of beer themed actually because in the fateful night there's haunted beer there's <laughs> beer that's haunted by like ghosts wow <laughs> nice. that's yeah. amazing yeah, yeah. So, so not that we're it. leaning into the irish stereotype yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay when we say it um, yes. <laughs> hence my backing yeah. away gently <laughs> yeah i was going to say that somehow ironically via the fates myself and emmett both commissioned the same artist to do different spots for bugmanson's ale at the same time yeah, like awesome. within within a week of each other i'd say yeah. it was like is this the same is this what easy no. job for him though daniel who's also did the midnight map for us as well uh yeah. or was like oh i need a i need a bugman's ale tankard and then i was like i also need a bugman's ale tankard but mine is a caradron one so it has cogs and stuff on it. <laughs> yeah we just use honest uh oak from the drack walls yeah. our, our, <laughs> our metal will keep it cooler yeah. uh, <laughs> there was a uh, question might alter the flavor and then you've yeah, got a exactly. whole yeah <laughs> There was a question a little bit earlier. Is like, are there any? Are do you, how do you stop yourself from from putting in like your characters or favorite characters into into your your stories, your your court books, or do you do you not you resist don't. it? <laughs> so, or, or are your characters in these books? Are they now heroes or villains in the in the setting that you're writing? My uh, characters, my friends' characters, and my kids are in them. Like the the starter set character Zan Bamir is an anagram of my son's name. Aww. And my daughter's name is in there as well in the in the core book. Uh, so I just put them in. Like my character's That's names amazing. are in some of the suggested names for characters. <laughs> I haven't done that. Now I feel like a bad father. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that Zach, Zach who uh, works on on works in uh, Wrath and Glory, uh, one of his like play, playtest characters became um, Wet Wilgern in Death on the Reich Companion. So sometimes stuff like that happens where someone has a cool idea for. A companion or for a character and also have started them I'm like, yes. oh, brilliant. <laughs> in they nice. go. there we go that's done. <laughs> yeah. oh that's cool that's cool lovely easter eggs for folks to to now work out who is who yeah. and what is what that's awesome um i think we could probably chat lots more and take yes. up lots of time talking about all this it's <laughs> a pleasure lunch, always you know, yeah. great right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but as kate mentioned i am starting to get quite peckish um which means we should probably <laughs> probably wrap up for today um if folks want to find out more or get these PDFs or sign up for pre-orders, where's the best place to go? Yeah, so if you just head to our website, uh, cubicle7games.com, um, we have you can click on our various different lines, get some information. We have the shop there. Um, we have news where we always share um, articles and stuff. Dave, again, uh, did a load of really fantastic articles for, for Warhammer Fantasy recently. Um, Elaine did some really great encounter design blog for Soulbound. So loads of news articles there and then you have the shop there we can go and pre-order um buy the pdfs direct um 
then obviously we have our Facebook, uh, which keeps the seven, and our our, our Twitter. Um, I think that's it. I think we might be on Instagram. We are on Instagram. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm good at my job, I swear. Yeah, and, and just to throw in, when you buy a physical book from us, you uh, will also get the PDF. And if you buy one of our physical books in the store, we are partnered with Bricks and Mortar, and you should um, oh. bug your local game store to find out how you can get that PDF. Um, yeah, especially this year. Um, keep your receipts. It's Sorry. obviously hugely important for... Um, you know, uh, local businesses and, and game stops. Yeah. Um, so any support you can give to them, do. Um, and it's very, if, if you are a, a store, you can, it's very easy to become the part of the bits and mortar. So people can pre-order with you and get a PDF. Awesome. Right awesome, awesome. Thanks for that, folks. It's been, like I said, absolute delight chatting with you about all the, all the different lines. Um, uh, we are gonna go now and um, get some lunch uh, <laughs> and, and maybe, yeah chat a bit Get more onto the cubicle seven website and yeah. try not yes. to buy yeah. everything sorry sorry <laughs> and we, we sorry. even we <laughs> even have other non-warhammer lines that you can look it's at like, oh yes. yeah, yeah that's There's, also um, true uh is it doctor who doctor yeah. who yes doctor who yeah. is uh we have some some news there for doctor who as well um i think 12th doc and i think we've already announced the second edition I'm afraid haven't, there it is <laughs> i guess <laughs> scoops fantastic awesome <laughs> awesome sauce um if you um if you want to help us support your friendly local game stores and um, you want us to have a chat like we did with damon from colin gaming corner earlier um tell them to get in touch all they have to do yes. is uh, find us on the socials and um, let them know and we'll find out more about them we'll find out what they started their gaming life with where their shop is and everything else and if you want to find out more about cubicle seven definitely go and go and bug them on the socials and check out their their web stores and um uh, so on and so forth it's it's been a pleasure uh we will be back well cubicle seven have got lots of work to do we, and we, we won't come back <laughs> Sorry. we shouldn't invite them back next week otherwise all these wonderful supplements and and new books won't get made um but me and kate will be back next week with some more people to chat with um it's been a pleasure folks yes. everybody Cheers, stay folks. safe really really great yeah, to chat. thanks so much Lovely for having to us talk to you chaps thank you yeah thanks very much guys Bye. Bye. Very cool. Bye. Bye.